How's it going everybody? I hope you guys are having a great day today. I'm super excited. I got a new card uh, in the mail a couple of days ago actually and I haven't opened it because uh, I've been waiting to find time to make this video. So the, the card is a 6700 XT by XFS Force. Um, it's a 12 GB memory card, PCIe 4.0. Uh, pretty much one of the new generation cards that AMD put out. It's the same line as the 68, 6800, 6800 XT, 6900 XT. Uh, this one came out, I would say, probably a month ago. Um, so I, I wanted to kind of do a, like a first impressions video of what it looks like, how it feels like, kind of open it up in front of you guys. I haven't even opened it yet. And in this video, I'm going to keep it short and simple. Um, this is kind of like a no fluff video. I'm going to talk about mining performance. Uh, general availability, uh, price, profitability, and whether you should buy it or not buy it. And then towards the end, I'm gonna put it in my uh, in my rig, uh, in my AMD rig, and test it out and see you know what kind of hashing rates are we gonna uh, get on it. All right, so let's get going with uh, with this. As I said, it's actually my first time opening it. All right. Nice box, clean, compact. Uh, I got this, so first things first, let's talk about how I got this uh, card. I picked it up on Facebook Marketplace from a gentleman who was uh, selling it. Um, the current MSRP price, uh, locally, at least here in Canada, on the lower end is about 750 Canadian dollars. And on the higher end is about um, 1,050, roughly. And I picked this card up for 920 bucks, I believe, uh, before taxes. So all of these numbers are before taxes. So I'm kind of a little bit on the higher end, uh, but I'm not at the highest end of that of that range. Um, okay, put the receipt on the side. Look at that. It looks a lot like a reference card. It's huge. This is bigger than, this is almost bigger than my 6800 XT. It's definitely a lot longer. Let's open it up. So basically no, no major fuss over here. It comes with uh, just a box, a couple of manuals, nothing too, nothing too crazy. Yep. All right, let's open it up. It's still sealed everything. <laughs> uh, I got this probably like a week ago and I'm like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to make the video. Tomorrow I'm going to make the video. And I haven't done so. So I think it's mostly metal. Yeah. Metal backplate. Let me see. Metal backplate. It definitely looks a lot like a reference card. It's huge. Definitely like a very good looking uh, card. We've got Two HDMI ports and two display ports. Heatsink is huge. And this one takes two uh six two eight pins. So it's dual eight pins. Very, very good looking card. So if you're looking for a very good looking card that almost looks like a reference card, this is the card to to get by XFS Force. Um, so let's talk about its mining performance. You can probably look it up, but this card is supposed to do about about 47 mega hash. It's gonna do 47 mega hash uh, for roughly, uh, if you leave it on like with no overclock settings or anything like that, it's gonna be around 170. But I've seen people very easily do 100, maybe 110, and with some tinkering around uh, with a more power tool on Windows, you can probably bring it down all the way to 80. Somebody had brought it down all the way to 80. So 47, uh, mega hash at 80 watts for roughly let's say 900 bucks or maybe on the lower end 750 bucks now if you were to compare that for for example what's a good you know what's a good card that makes something like this maybe 57 actually 5700 actually would probably do a lot more than that but let's say 3060 3060 right now does roughly about 47 to 48 on the lower end, you can probably find them for 550 bucks MSRP, maybe $600, also MSRP. Um, but the 3060 has a lot of infrastructure that you need to build around it because it doesn't work on any motherboard and, and all of that. So you have to factor into you have to factor all of that cost into uh, into that. So I, 
that's kind of like what I think when, when I, if I were to compare this with an NVIDIA card, I would probably compare it with the somewhere between the 3060 and the 3060 Ti in terms of, um, you know, performance and mining and profitability and all of that. The current profitability on this card, if you go to NiceHash and you plug in, um, you know, profit, profitability of a 6700 XT is roughly at the time of recording this video, four and a half, I, I want to say four and a half dollars a day, um, which has, and that's assuming that you, you're paying uh, 10, sat, 10 cents per kilowatt hour for your electricity. So a definite profitability over the last couple of days have significantly dropped, unfortunately. So you got to keep that in mind when you're buying any card, pretty much how much you're paying for it and how long do you need to mine on it for it to pay itself back and you know for you to potentially start making uh profits uh, on this it's definitely one of the more available cards um so when amd came out with this probably a month ago they almost i don't want to say flooded but there's definitely an influx of supply um of these um it comes in stock and sells out pretty quickly, but it comes in stock fairly often, uh, at least locally. But many people are, are buying it because it's, it's gaming performance actually pretty decent. Uh, now for the price, you know, is it, is it the best card out there? Definitely not. The 5700 XT actually does a lot better in terms of mining. Um, the 6800 XT is worse. The 6800, I want to say, is worse. 6900 is definitely worse. So on the AMD side, in terms of like a comparable new generation card, as far as I know, there's nothing that compares to this. Now, are there older generation cards that perform better? Yes, 5700 XT. On the newer end, no. So. For me, when I picked this up and the reason why I bought it, I thought about it, I'm like, is this the right card for me and all of that? And I always think, I always keep this in mind. Is it better for me to buy this today, start mining on it, make, for example, in 10 to 20 days, let's say, assuming that we're still doing four bucks a day, you know, if four bucks a day in Ethereum, we're talking about mining Ethereum, um, 10 days, that's 40 bucks, 20 days, that's, you know, 80 bucks maybe if i mine this for a month it's very tough to find cards these days and sometimes it might be a little bit better to uh, buy a card maybe maybe a little bit over msrp like by a, by a fraction i mean like maybe five percent over msrp or something like that if you want to get a card right now considering that you're going to be able to start mining it, mining on it right now i would i wouldn't recommend it um this card kind of sits somewhere in the middle um, the guy that I bought this from basically said, Hey, you know, I want like 60 or 70 bucks for my time for going around and, and finding this GPU and buying it, you know, under, uh, his account and all of that. And I was like, I thought, I thought that was fair because, um, if I were to spend the same amount of time doing it, you know, it would probably cost me that much in terms of like my time and effort and, and all of that. So here's the card. Let me see. Did we take out the back plate? No. So, if you're looking for a card today, the 6700 XT is generally one of the more available cards. Is it profitable? Yes, it's extremely profitable right now. Does it make sense for the price? It depends. It's very, very tough to, to answer that question. You'd have to kind of like put in the numbers for yourself, figure out, you know, ROI. It all depends what happens with Ethereum as, as, as long as you continue to mine Ethereum on it. Um, depends on the general state of the market, depends what happened with crypto, demand is an all time high. There's a whole lot of factors that are, you know, playing out in this the demand and supply game that's supply and demand game that's going on with, with GPU cards. Um, but for me, I think this is gonna be Probably my only purchase of this of a 6700 XT. Um, I'm gonna on the AMD side. I'm probably not gonna buy any cards. There's nothing out there that makes sense on the AMD side right now. On the Nvidia side, definitely if you can score a 3070, a 3060 Ti, which is amazing, even a 3080, you're still better off in terms of mining performance or mining efficiency than almost 
all of the AMD cards out there. Maybe the 5700 XT is uh, is an exception. Maybe the Radeon 7s are, are, are an exception, but those are very expensive these days as well. So keep that in mind. Anyway, I don't want to talk too for too long. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it inside my uh, mining rig, and I'll show you a picture of it working, and then we'll hop onto. Uh, my computer, I have Hive OS. I've configured all of my rig in Hive OS. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be able to drop the wattage down all the way to 80, maybe maybe 90. I won't be able to, to do it in Hive OS because I don't think the more power tool is available in Linux yet. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not 100% sure. And we'll apply the undervolts and overclock, see how it's performing, and we'll, we'll take it from there. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, here we are in my crypto mining grow tent. I've covered this in a couple of videos in my last two videos, but I'll do another update video. I've reorganized things and I've cleaned it up, cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, so now it looks a lot better, but that's for another video. Okay, here's the final setup. It's not the cleanest, but this card is huge and it's kind of like a little bit awkward. Oh, okay. I still have to connect the power from this uh, PSU. I powered the riser with this PSU, so this cable is going to go all the way back. And then this is the cable. This is the MSI Z390A Pro that can take, you know, four GPU easily, six. You can take six with a little bit of configuration in the BIOS and even up to seven with that M.2 to PCIe or PCIe uh, adapter. Um, so final step is for me to connect this. One sec, I'll be back. The um, Radeon 6700 XT is working fine and everything else is powered on. Now I have to go to my computer and see what's going on and whether this card is gonna act funny or not. This is, I think, in our, the RX 590. Sometimes if you connect you know, you know, one extra card or something like that, something funky happens. So you just have to make sure that all of your connections are right and everything is kind of like tight and nothing came loose during this uh, process. All right, we'll check back in on the computer. So I will be right back. All right, folks, so I'm on my computer right now and here's the first issue. It's not detecting it. It says unknown GPU and unknown memory, and it's not doing anything. I don't know if this is a driver's problem or if it's an issue with the GPU itself. And if I go to the miner itself, if I go to the miner here, see it's hashing on all of the RX 580s and 590s and, and nothing's happening on the last one. Right, so what I'm gonna try to do is update the drivers and then see if that's gonna solve the problem. This is interesting. I I don't know how to solve this. I don't know if this is a Hive OS problem in terms of the drivers and stuff like that, or is this a card problem? I hope it's not a card problem and it's only an OS problem. If it's an OS problem, then I can switch this to Windows and test it. I really didn't want to because this would kind of was work the setup was working great for me so let me update the drivers and um, and i will test it all right folks i figured out what the issue was basically um i had to reflash hive os because the drivers have uh, been recently updated and hive os did not support the 6700 xt drivers uh even as of like a month ago so i downloaded a new image of hive os flashed it on a new usb and then tried this again, and there you go, right here, it shows up. Uh, I'm getting roughly 46.7 mega hash. Um, it goes up and down between 45 and 47, roughly. Here are my overclocks. So for the core clock, I put it at 1250. Core voltage, 700. Memory voltage, 700. Memory clock, 1075 memory voltage 1300 fan is at 80% and I didn't touch anything else and there you go here it is 
the last one 47.4 47.5 it's still it's still going up and down and it's consuming roughly about 115 watts which is a lot more than what i would like uh, i think hive os doesn't have the ability to drop that significantly i know on windows you can do it so maybe we'll do like a different episode uh, episode we'll do a different video <laughs> we'll do a different video um on that uh topic all right, I'm gonna end the video right now. I hope this was informative. Um, if you have a 6700 XT, this kind of will give you an idea of what to expect in terms of hash rate, performance, profitability. If you have any questions, as always, put them in the comments and I'll respond to them as soon as possible. I hope you guys have a great day. Take care of each other and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.